Hello everyone, welcome to DPS 2020. My name is Rodrigo Souza and I'm a Senior Program Manager with the Azure Cosmos DB team. In this session, you, you'll learn how to do HTAP analytics with Azure Synapse Link for Cosmos DB. So this session is pre-recorded, but I will be live in the chat window answering your questions. So send me your questions. Also, thank you for your interest on Snap's link for Cosmos DB. So we'll start seeing why we created Synapse link for Cosmos DB. Then we'll understand how it works under the hood. We'll see how much it is and what are the typical scenarios for this technology. At the end of the session, we'll see the roadmap and a couple of demos. So why we created a Synapse Link? So before Synapse Link, how could you do analytics on your data in, within, in Cosmos DB? The first option was to run OLTP and OLAP workloads on the same database. But this approach brings performance impact on both workloads at scale. And also it demands that data archiving is delayed to meet analytical demands. Right, so because you need to analyze the past and create time series analysis and things like that, so you can archive the data. Uh, and these two uh, facts they bring cost and latency to as your data volume grows. The second option would be to separate OLTP and OLAP. How? Uh, periodically exporting your Cosmos DB data to a data lake. But this approach brings uh, delays on, on insights and reports. Also, it adds some complexity. You need to manage data formats, ATL jobs, and storage. So not optimal. So the Cosmos DB team decided to use this HTAP approach for analytics. So HTAP means hybrid transactional and analytical processing. The idea is to enable near real-time reporting and insights on your operational data. With that, we can uh, allow, we can support near real-time dashboards, live business trends, and predictive analytics with low latency and low costs. These capabilities will support uh, many scenarios, many use cases across uh, uh, different industries like retail recommendations, fraud detection, healthcare, alerts, and IoT uh, workloads. You can predict IoT devices' faults or monitor them. Uh, so with Synapse Link, we are breaking down the barrier between OLTP and OLAP. The idea is to, to, as I mentioned before, is to allow near real-time analytics. And don't worry, I will explain what near real-time means exactly in the next couple of slides. Uh, also, Synapse Link brings no performance impact to your transactional workloads. It reduces your costs for BI and analytics workloads. And management is very simple, and you'll see how it works. It's in preview today, but will be GA on January or February of the next year. Okay, let's see how it works. Let's see how uh, Azure Synapse Link works under the hood. So today, let's say we have our operational data uh, our existing applications uh, loading data into Cosmos DB transactional store. It's a role store optimizer for transactional operations. Then we have our backend services syncing, uh, replicating your transactional data in another format, in a columnar format. We call it analytical store, right? It's this format is optimized for analytical queries. And then we have this native HTAP integration between Synapse and Cosmos DB. We call it Azure Synapse Link. And you can use both 
SQL Serverless and Apache Spark runtimes to analyze the analytical store data, the data you have in analytical store. As you can see, your, your applications will still, still working on the transactional store and at the same time with automatic sync uh, services managed by Cosmos DB, you also have your uh, uh, data ready for analytics in a columnar format. And with Synapse, finally you can uh, work with machine learning, big data analytics, and also build your BI dashboards. The idea is to allow near real-time insights on your operational data. So how how it works? Let, let's keep let's keep working on this and and, and see the details, right? So the idea is this no ATL HTAP approach. Uh, analytical store is fully isolated. It's a fully isolated column store from for large scale analytics on operational data. So here, as you can see in this image, uh, in, in the colors will explain how the data is stored on disk. Right. So on the left, the transactional store, you can see that the data is uh, stored all together for all columns. Right. They are all together. While in the columnar format, we are uh, we are storing the not the rows but the columns. And but what is this auto sync? Auto sync uh, it runs uh, every two minutes. So we'll be grabbing your transactional data and every two minutes we are creating the columnar format of your data. You don't need to do anything. It's self-managed compute throughput performance and storage without any downtime. So you don't need to worry to manage or to, to any configuration about it. There is no performance or cost impact extra performance or cost impacts on your transactional workload right and but actually it will have the opposite will happen you you're gonna have you're not gonna use your cosmos db RUs to uh, to any analytical workload this will happen in snaps also, we have automatic schema inference because Cosmos DB is a NoSQL database. It's schema on read. It allows you to have different schema for each row, for each document in your transactional store. Uh, and we'll talk more about it in the next uh, slides, you'll see. And also we have this native integration with Synapse to analyze data directly with SQL Serverless and Spark runtimes. CosmosDB is a globally distributed NoSQL database. So in all regions, on all Azure regions, you have your database. You also can may have an analytical store. This will avoid the physical distance between your data analysts, your BI dashboards, and the data. So how to how to uh, enable analytical store? So the first step is to turn a Synapse link on in your database account. The second step is to enable explicitly enable uh, analytical store in each container you want to use it. It's not turned on by default. For now, you can only enable an analytical store on new containers, but existing database accounts are okay. When we go to GA, we'll be able to enable in existing containers as well. So as soon as analytical store is on, and analytical store only can be on when you turn Snaps link on your, on your Cosmos DB account, so I'm returning to the first bullet point here. So as soon as analytical store is on, Cosmos DB will start to replicate the transactional data into the, into the columnar format. 
And again, it will be applied to all regions where your, your Cosmos DB data is replicating your information. Uh, supported API. So today we support SQL and SQL API and Azure Cosmos DB API for MongoDB. So these two APIs are supported today. And what is an identical time to live TTL? Uh, the, these configurations allow you to choose how long data should be retained in your analytical store. And it works like transactional TTL for transactional store, what is, exists today. Uh, analytical TTL uh, configuration works like this. First, if you use zero or you doesn't, if you doesn't inform, if you don't inform the any uh, this param this parameter to your uh, container creation, there will be no analytical store. Data won't be retained, so you don't want analytical store, right? And that's the default option if you're using the portal. If you use minus one, or if you use the, the portal, the, first, the second option in the portal, that it means on in the portal, you'll see, I'm gonna do a demo. You're gonna have infinite retention of your analytical data in analytical store, right? And so it's ideal when you want to retain all your historical data for analytics. If you specify, if you specify any uh, number, that's the number of seconds you're gonna retain your data in analytical store. So it allows you to expire the data after some time. It's the idea here is to save some money with analytical store as well, right? But it's important to understand that both TTLs, analytical and transactional TTLs, they are independent. You can set them independently. So what are our options? If analytical TTL is bigger than transactional TTL, you're gonna retain your operational data longer in analytical store. And here you can save some money, reducing your costs, not uh, archiving data in your transactional work uh, uh, store. It will save uh, performance, it will improve the performance of your transactional workloads, right? You can keep both TTLs with the same value and you'll be mirroring your data, your transactional data in analytical store. Or you may have uh, an analytical TTL smaller than transactional TTL. This, this means that you're gonna expire items in an analytical store earlier than in transactional store. So all, all kinds of situations are covered here with this independence between both TTLs. And what about MongoDB? So it's a cloud native H type for MongoDB as well. And you, again, you can use both runtimes, uh, Synapse runtimes, T-SQL, uh, SQL serverless for T-SQL and Spark against your MongoDB data. And as we have for SQL API, SQL API was the first one, Mongo was announced last Ignite. Uh, again, there is no impact on on your OLTP workloads, and again, it's a no ATL approach for OLAP uh, workloads. Analysis against high polyformic MongoDB uh, schemas that because MongoDB allows you to change the as any NoSQL database to keep on changing the schema of your documents. For MongoDB, the default is full fidelity schema, and I will talk more about it. Uh, but what is full fidelity schema? That's our schema automatic automatic schema inference for MongoDB, and it, again, it's fully managed. So on the right, we see two documents uh, as an example, and you see that in the document on the right, in the middle of the slide. The date is a real date, like a string format. And the second 
document, the document on the on the light on the right, yeah. So we, we, I was talking of the document on the left. Now on the right, the the same date, the same field, right? The same property of your JSON document is a number. Also, we have the product vector, and again, we see we can see different data types, right? In the vector, in the same order. The, in the uh, on the left, we have a number twelve point five, and on the right, we have x, uh, y, z. So how to manage this kind of situation in a columnar store, right? So our auto sync will create for each data type, for each property, we'll create a column in an analytical store. That's full fidelity schema. So let's, let's go back to the purchase date. Today we have two data types, a uh, string and a number. Let's see we will have in the future another document with a, with a third data type. There will be a third column in your analytical store. So that's full fidelity schema in action. And, and we'll, I, will, I will do a demo on that uh, by the end of the presentation. So let's talk more about schema. So the following constraints are applicable for your operational data when you enable an analytical store. Uh, you can have the maximum of 200 properties at any nested, nested level and a maximum of five nested levels. So after 200 properties that you are at, your, at any level of your document, it will not be represented in an analytical store, right? So the first 200 will be represented. After that, they won't be there. There won't be an error or something like that, but they will just won't be there. And any item with more than five nested levels also won't be there. Again, there will be no error, but we can't represent more than five levels. Also, uh, analytical store is case insensitive. So be careful with your namings, okay? And so I mentioned full fidelity schema for Mongo. And what is the other option? So for SQL API, the default option is well-defined schema. For our SQL API documents, you should always use the same uh, schema for all your documents. The first document of your container will define the schema of that uh, container. For, from now on, after the first document, all documents in an analytical store will follow the schema of the first document. And documents with different schemas won't be synced into an analytical store. So this is very important when you are building your analytical workloads using Synapse Link and Cosmos DB Analytical Store. Again, full fidelity schema is a default option for MongoDB. And Analytical Store will have one column for each data type of each property. So uh, as an example here, let's say we have a query. Uh, we are using, let's say, Azure Synapse SQL Serverless. And we are querying our orders uh, collection that for Synapse Link is a table, right? And it will be, you're gonna select the column price dot the data type, right? Where uh, now I have another uh, example, let's say the status column, we have it is string and also an integer. So if you wanna cover both in your query, it will be two different columns. So that's why you need to always use the the data type as a suffix for your uh, property that now is a column in an analytical store. So that's how it works. Oh, but do I need to know all data types? Yes, if you do a se select star, you'll see all columns you have, all suffix that were created. And we have this table here. I'm also sharing the link. Uh, we also have this table with all possible data types 
and the suffix we analytical sort we'll have for them. If you are not familiar with Synapse Analy with Azure Synapse Analytics, it's a complete platform for your analytical workloads. Uh, it will cover uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, intelligent apps, and business intelligence. But how? Let's see. Starting from the bottom, uh, Synapse Link can integrate data from many uh, Azure storage options like Azure Data Lake or Synapse Link, and, and we are talking about Cosmos DB Analytical Store here. Also, we, it's an integrated platform for man, with management, security, monitoring, and metadata store. And this metadata store is shared by all runtimes, right? right? We have Synapse SQL for T-SQL queries on batch or streaming, interactive processing. And also we have Apache Spark for big data processing with Python, Scala, .NET, and so on. Uh, SQL uh, is, you can use dedicated or serverless. Uh, Multiple languages supported, so SQL, Python, .NET, Java, Scala, and R. And we have a software as a service front-end, uh, that's Synapse Analytics Studio for your developer's web experience, right? Okay, so how can we use Synapse Apache Spark with Cosmos DB? analytical store. So what you can do is first, you can create Spark tables for the, for frequent access of interactive, for interactive Spark SQL queries, right? So you are always querying that container, so why don't you create a Spark table? You can also use data frames to read the data for batch streaming, or for batch or streaming processing and machine learning. I don't need to mention that Spark, uh, Synapse Apache Spark, it has Azure Machine Learning SDK built in. So it's pretty easy to do machine learning. Uh, and and you do, you'll see a demo about it by the end of the session. Uh, also, you can write into a new existing container, Cosmos DB container. Right, so let's say you are running a Spark workload. You loaded the data from a Spark table into a data frame, and you are, and you use machine learning aggregations, and you found specific result that you want to save back to Cosmos DB. So you're gonna insert this data into a new Azure Cosmos DB container through OLTP store, through transactional store. Analytical store is read only. Only Cosmos DB backend service can write to an analytical store, but you can write back to an OLTP or to a transactional container. And if you want, you can turn an analytical store on for this new container as well. And also, it's simple to use and secure thanks to integration with linked service connection. I will do a demo for this as well. So linked service is when you don't need to specify the connection string for each comment. We're gonna create metadata about it and you can refer it as a linked service. So with Spark, you can execute ad hoc data exploration and find answers to unknown questions. You can do your big data analytics, including data preparation or curation. And of course, machine learning to build and deploy models. We are mentioning here Azure Machine Learning, but of course you can use all open, open source frame, uh, uh, machine learning frameworks there we are out there. And what about SQL Serverless? That's the other Synapse runtime that can be used with Cosmos DB Analytical Store. Here you can create, with Synapse SQL Serverless, you can create views for frequent access for interactive SQL. You can run uh, analytical T-SQL queries 
and on top of your Cosmos DB data in seconds. And you can and here when we talk about these SQL queries, uh, we are including things that are really complicated to do in Cosmos DB transactional store. We are talking about joins, aggregations, and so on. Also can build uh, rich near real-time dashboards because Power BI is integrated to, to Azure Synapse. You can use a, range, a wide range of BI and ad hoc querying tools. Anything integrated with this SQL interface will work, like SQL Server Management Studio. Right. And with these views I mentioned in the first bullet point, you can build a logical data warehouse and a symmetric layer without data movement. Right? Because we are talking we are in the big data era and it's not a good idea to keep on moving data around. So you can create this unified view of your data across causes to be data lake and so on. And SQL Serverless went to public preview last month, October 2020. So what are the BI analytics and BI partners we see with Azure Synapse Link and today, right? So Cosmos DB on the upper left corner was the first database integrated into Synapse Link. But we may start to see, we we'll probably start to see new uh, transactional operational database on Azure going to on the same way, because we uh, Synapse Azure Synapse will be this real uh, analytics hub for all your data on Azure. On the left, we have also the the after right after Synapse Link, we have Synapse SQL Serverless, and as I mentioned before, we can use Power BI to build dashboards. You can use any T SQL compatible tool for ad hoc data exploration. In the middle, we can see that Spark runtime, Synapse Spark runtime, can also read data from Cosby for all your other data sources that are exporting data to Data Lake Store. And, and today, this is not managed as it is for Synapse Link, right? And with Spark, you can also do data exploration, but uh, Spark opens also the uh, possibility to do big data analytics and machine learning, as I mentioned before. And I also mentioned that with Spark, you can write, write data back to CosmoDB or into Synapse SQL pool. That's the old uh, Azure SQL data warehouse. The trans this is the, the provisioned SQL pool. It's not serverless. And that's your data warehouse on the cloud, right? And of course, Spark, can play the data integration role here and load your data into your data warehouse. Data warehouse and that SQL pool also can read data from Data Lake Store, but not from Synapse Link, at least for now. We'll talk more about it later. So that's a vision of Azure Synapse as a analytics hub for all your data on Azure. And how to enable Synapse Link in your in Cosmos DB? No, how to enable Synapse Link, how to create a, a how to query your Synapse, your, your Cosmos DB data with Synapse Link. So first, you're going to create uh, you're going to connect to a, an external data source. And you need to select your Cosmos DB database. And after that, it's really easy to run a, a Spark or SQL command. So we have these gestures ready to go on the data explorer that will be created after you connect to your Cosmos DB database. In this on the right, you can see the two collections we have, and and for 
a new SQL script, we have this gesture to select the top 100 rows. And for Spark, we're going to create a new notebook for you. You can start with uh, syntax, with the syntax you want for to load the data from that collection into a data frame, to write data frame to a container, so that's the right back to Cosmos DB, to create a Spark table, to load streaming data frame to container, or the opposite, to write streaming data frame to container. And what else I can use with Synapse Link? So you can use PowerShell and Azure CLI to deploy all your components. And you can use Azure Data Factory uh, or Azure Synapse pipelines to run your notebooks or your Spark jobs and also to do some parameterization of this execution. And also, Azure Synapse Spark Pool it has Azure Machine Learning SDK built in. So, of course, you can leverage all ML Ops features we have with the Azure ML SDK. Now, let's talk about pricing. And here, this is just the order of magnitude. It doesn't consider discounts, enterprise agreements, regional costs, partners pricing and so on. So this is the raw information from our Azure calculator, right? So let's say we have one gigabyte of data. In an analytical store, the, the price is 0 0.02 per month, cents of dollar per month. While in transactional store, it's almost 10 times more, right? 0.2 0 0.25 per month, cents per month. And read and write. So to write, who, who writes into an analytical store? Cosmos DB backend service. And that's exactly the same pricing for Azure Blob Storage. So you're going to pay uh, 5 cents per 10,000 operations. And to read, that's uh, Azure Synapse Runtimes, reading your columnar format data, your analytical store data. So it will be 0 0.005 cents per 10,000 operations. While to do the same, at the same time, to do the same thing in transaction store, you're going to use your Cosmos DB RUs. And Synapse Analytics Runtimes, they also they also will charge your uh, your will charge your account for s uh, for SQL Serverless pool. It will be five dollars per terabyte that you're reading, while the Spark pool will charge you uh, zero point one six seven cents per uh, virtual core per hour, right? So that's the regular Synapse price in here. And while to do exactly the same reads and writes in transactions, so of course you're going to be using uh, Cosmos DB Compute, and that means you're going to use your RUs, your request units. So I created this scenario here, this pricing example for one terabyte of data and 1,000 read operations per second. So on the left, we have this simple scenario with analytical store. And your monthly cost would be something like $2,392. Uh, while at the same time, without analytical store, without Synapse Link, all these uh, read operations and all of that one terabyte of data will be in transactional store. And your monthly cost will be something like $2,781. So that's something like 20% less on your costs, right? But how can I how do they how can I know more about pricing? How how I did this, let me go back to the previous slide, how I did this uh calculation here, this scenario. So we, uh, here's the link for Cosmos DB pricing, including analytical store. Here's the link for Synapse Analytics pricing. 
And also, the most important, here's the link for CosmosDB Capacity Calculator. So the Capacity Calculator is the best option to find out what would be your cost using uh, or CosmosDB Analytical Store or not, right? With the Capacity Calculator, you can compare your, your costs. Now let's see some typical scenarios for Azure Synapse Link for Cosmos DB. We'll start with supply chain, when you need to do analytics, forecasting, and reporting. So it's pretty common to see in supply chain scenarios different data sources like uh, online applications, batch ingestion of, of data, and streaming of IoT data coming from uh, logistics IoT devices, the telemetry. All this data landing on being uploaded to Azure Cosmos DB transactional store. As you know now, we are be, will be syncing every two minutes all this data into analytical store, and this will enable your data scientists to use Azure Synapse, Spark, and Azure Machine Learning to prepare the data, train models, to deploy the models with Azure ML SDK, and if you want, you can write data back to Transactional Store. Also, you may have your BI dashboards and your operational reports using Azure Synapse SQL Serverless. So this is the uh, reference architecture for the supply chain scenario. For real-time personalization, uh, that's interesting because the data being loaded to transactional store and synced with analytical store, it will use Azure Synapse uh, uh, Spark pipeline to, to train the model, write data back to transactional store, and we'll have an Azure Kubernetes services. And this uh, service that will also help the web application will read the predictions of personalized content from Cosmos GB Transactional Store, right? So this is a complete cycle of the information, the, the full end-to-end -end pipeline of the information coming from the web application, the transactional data, becoming analytical data, then you use Spark to train the model, to, to ingest this data, submit to the model, find the best personalized content, write da this data back to Cosmos DB, and then we have uh, multiple Kubernetes services reading this data to finally support back the web application. So an interesting personalization scenario. IoT, Cosmos DB is a great option for IoT. And let's say we have IoT devices running on uh, IoT Edge or not, and the, this data is being uploaded to Azure IoT Hub. After the IoT Hub, we have stream analytics reading this data in real time and loading this data, persisting this data into Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, our collections that are HTAP enabled, so they have analytical store enabled. Uh, from that collection, from analytical store, we will use uh, Azure Synapse Analytics Spark for machine learning and Synapse SQL Serverless for BI and reporting. So again, a typical uh, IoT scenario using Cosmos DB Analytical Store and Synapse Link and Synapse Analytics. Uh, also, you can, there's an interesting detail, you can set your TTL to 90 days, maybe because a business rule, you don't need to, to uh, store data, transactional data older than 90 days. But at the same time, you may have a, long, a bigger TTL for, your, for the same data in Analytical Store. And what is our roadmap, Synapse Link roadmap for 2020? So for Cosmos DB, we will go, we'll be GA in the beginning of the next year. And when GA will support uh, managed VNets, 
we are gonna we will enable we will allow you to enable a, an analytical store for existing containers as i mentioned before today we only allow you to create to turn it on for new containers uh, an analytical store will be supported by synapse data flow pipeline so today the pipeline can e execute a notebook and the notebook is reading from an analytical store leveraging synapse link but analytical store will be supported directly as a data source in your pipeline and we have native dedic uh, de uh, dedicated SQL pool connection so today SQL serverless pool can read from an analytical store from causes to be an analytical store but we will have the SQL dedicated pool Azure Synapse SQL dedicated pool also reading from an analytical store uh, and what else so other database applications will also be integrated into synapse link they will also have an analytical store they will also allow you to run analytics and bi in the h -tap, with an h -tap approach i'm talking about azure sql db azure postgres sql dynamics f n o e and more so stay tuned we have some Great news coming for Synapse Link in 2020. Now let's start our demos. And we have a couple of demos. They are located in this URL. I created this URL for you. And this in this URL, you're gonna see it's a GitHub repo. You see three demos. The first one. It's an IoT demo and we have a data set and it's based on the Cosmos DB SQL API. Uh, we have both streaming and batch ingestion into OLTP with Spark. After we load the data into OLTP, uh, an analytical store will be populated automatically, right? And so after the ingestion, we'll be able to run Spark SQL joins on the data on the collections we loaded. And we're gonna do and you can do anomaly detection using ML MML Spark. That's our cognitive service package for Spark. Azure Cognitive Service for Spark. Uh, there is also a retail demo. Again, we provide you a data set. Again, we are using SQL API. Again, we are doing batch ingestion. But this time, we will be using forecasting using Spark and Azure ML SDK. Being more specifically, we'll be using AutoML. And also, there's a third demo in this repo, and it's uh, an e-commerce for food orders this time we don't have a data set we have a data generator and we'll be using the mongodb api not sql and we run aggregations with spark and spark sql i will start my demos with my brand new cosmos db database account and i will show you how to enable synapse link for this account what you need to do is to go to the data explorer and here you see the option to enable synapse link in this account but there is another method another option how to do it. so when you try to create a new container you see that at the end of the tab of the wizard if you want uh, analytical sort option is not clickable why because Azure Synapse Link is required to do it. So here you also have an option to enable it. But I have this other database account where I enabled before. So I can't see the enable Synapse Link option anymore. It's done. So let me open, let me open this uh, database where I have two collections with analytical store enabled. So here, when you check the settings 
of the collection, you see an analytical store TTL option. So you can turn it off. All means uh, infinite storage, infinite retention of your data. Or if you click on, you can specify the number of seconds you want to retain your data, right? So this is how you enable Synapse Link and Analytical Store in a container. Today we only can do it on new containers. So here in the wizard to create a new container through the, through the portal, since in this account it's enabled, I can now click it on and off. And after I turn it on, I can come here to the settings and change from uh, the default for from on with no uh, seconds specified to this option with seconds. So here in this notebook, we have now going back to that URL I mentioned in the last slide, we have our three major uh, demos, examples for Synapse Link. So the first scenario is for IoT with streaming and batch data ingestion using Azure Synapse Spark into transactional store and then using MML Spark to do anomaly detection. And we have one notebook for uh, streaming ingestion, another one for batch ingestion, another one for joins and another one for anomaly detection. For the retail scenario, we have uh, just batch, batch ingestion and we are using Azure ML SDK. So we also, and we have one notebook to ingest the data, another notebook to, to use Azure ML to analyze the data and to, the, this is a forecasting scenario using auto ml but for the benefit of time uh, i'm gonna go deeper in this third scenario where we are using uh, mongodb api and batch ingestion so everything happens we within no not batch ingestion sorry we have uh, we have a data generator so everything happened in the same notebook there isn't a data set to be loaded so this notebook will show you how to uh, uh, prepare your environment to how to add the required package into your Synapse Spark Spark pool. Uh, then you're going to add your uh, database, your MongoDB database account information. And you're going to initialize the Mongo client and add some data with uh, this. I want to call out the, your attention for the timestamp property where we are loading uh, the time format for this property. And we are creating 500 uh, documents for this for uh, online uh, food orders so some random data here about pizza sandwich and so on so after that we can read from the from an analytical store uh, the information we just created loaded into a data frame and if we check the data frame uh, schema you see that there is one data type for each property. So here we have timestamp uh, and we uh, analytical store understood that information as a float 64. And we can run aggregations on top of the data frame. And also it's important to mention that we always should use the suffix that will be created for each property. So we have item, it's a string. So that's why we, to, for our aggregations, we always need to use the property name that it will be a column in the data frame with this, the suffix, and I need to start created. Uh, again, we have the table about the data types, and but here then we load again data with a different format. We are not using time anymore, it's a string. 
And if you again reload the data frame you and check the schema, you see that now we have two data types for timestamp. So when we are querying the data, we can specify timestamp.string or we can compare the timestamp.float and timestamp.string to analyze our data. So this is Spark SQL. So, but let's start the, the demo itself and I'm gonna leverage exactly this notebook. So this is my MongoDB account. And as you can see here, we created the HTAP container. So if we click here in documents, you'll see the, the documents we have for pizza, salad, and so on, right? And if we count here, you'll see that this collection has has 1,500 documents, right? So what I'm gonna do right away is to, uh, so that's exactly the same notebook I showed you here, but are now open in Snap Studio. And I'm gonna, I already populated here the information, database account and the, the container, HTAP. And what I'm gonna do is to add more data. So now my Spark session is running and I'm gonna add four, 500 more data. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do while it's running, I'm gonna create a linked service for that MongoDB account. So that's again the Synapse Studio, Synapse Workspace Studio. Right, and here in the data tab, uh, we can add uh, the linkage service. So you can connect to an external data, it will be MongoDB. Uh, let's call it a DPS. DPS 2020 uh, from subscription. So my subscription is a general use and account name is this account name and the database name will be here it is my demo synapse link mongodb and let me create this linked service and i'm going to show you uh, how linked service works so now if we refresh here we have DPS 2020 and now we have our HTAP collection and I can run a SQL serverless script right away. Right now, uh, SQL serverless isn't a, a full integrated with uh, linked service. So for now we need to paste here the key so let me get my key here. And now let's run our select statement. And what I'm gonna do, not only a select, so here we have our results back from our pizza and order food so it was a sandwich design in the first one so but what i'm gonna do is to replace this top 100 with count star and run it again and now we'll have 2000 documents in the collection so we are reading in near real time, the data we are ingesting from here, from our Spark notebook into transactional store, Synapse Link is syncing with an analytical store, and here we are reading from an analytical store 
using uh, Open Roll Set and SQL Serverless. But we also can leverage the integration of Azure Synapse Spark Pool with linked services. And here's our container, the same container, and I can create, let me close the properties, and it will create the script for you. You just need to add the name of your linked service here. In this case, it would be DPS 2020. And what you need to do is to run, to choose a Spark pool and to run the cell, it would start your Spark session. The last demo I have for you is using that IoT database I showed you before. And here we have, the, uh, we are using our SQL serverless pool and I created a database and a view for the IoT data. So this is a Cosmos DB a collection in SQL API and I'm using Open Row Set. I also created a view for the device installations and I'm also I'm creating an external table for a couple of files I have in my data lake, in my data lake store. So I created my customers. Uh, I have this dimension that actually it, it, it is a parquet file in my data lake, right? And also I have another dimension for other installations. And I want to show you that since we have external tables for data lake, in views for an analytical store, for Cosmos DB an analytical store, we can, and as an example, run queries with aggregations. So here I'm, I'm doing a join between my collection in Cosmos DB and a join with the external table that actually it is a parquet file in my data lake. So that's the idea of a logical or virtual data warehouse. We are not moving data around the, if, the infrastructure anymore. We are creating the data where it is. And here's an interesting example when we are joining again, joining data located in completely different places in, in around Azure infrastructure, but we are querying together as they were uh, in our data warehouse, right? So that's our last demo. And now I'm gonna go back to the presentation. And so we have this call to actions, this call to action here. The first one, again, the link to the sample notebooks we have. And stay tuned because we will be publishing new notebooks. Uh, and we have another Synapse Link session in DPS 2020. The name of the session is Building a Connected Analytics Hub with Synapse Link. It's delivered by, by my colleague, my friend, Arnaud Comet and you see lots of Power BI integrated with Azure Synapse Link. So closing the presentation, we have the special thanks to Microsoft, where I work, for supporting the conference. And again, thank you for your interest on Synapse Link for Azure Cosmos DB. And you can find me at LinkedIn, GitHub. So if you have any other question, let me know. I'm here to support you on your analytics challenges. And thank you so much. So here's some information to win the prizes and so on. Probably you have already seen this slide. And here are the Twitter accounts of the Data Geeks and the Data AI Summit. Thank you very much.